are joined by the incoming Secretary of the Department of Science and Technology to share his vision to be implemented under the Duterte administration. Please welcome Secretary Fortunato de la Peña. Good evening, sir, and welcome to New Slide. Sir, how is the transition coming along and what is the status of the DOST uh, when you when, want to assume office? Well, uh, as I have been saying, um, DOST is uh, fortunate mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, uh, even in uh, changing administrations, we, we carry out uh, programs which are good. There's continuity. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are new things that are being uh, implemented. And uh, I think this is uh, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, is good about the department. Um, the past administration, of course, has embarked on some big projects. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, many of them, for example, in the area of uh, disaster preparedness, mm -hmm. okay, uh, also in agriculture. Uh, but uh, I think uh, there is still a lot of uh, work to do in terms of uh, getting the results of uh, res research and development mm -hmm. fully utilized. Serving the government is nothing new for you. You said, uh, you mentioned earlier during our short chit chat that you have served several administrations in the past. Yes. How different or similar do you think the incoming Duterte administration will be when it comes to dealing with science and technology? There, there is no uh, particular instruction yet, but mm -hmm. uh, we are, uh, I'm looking at it in terms of the general pronouncements that has been made, for example, priority being given to uh, health, to agriculture and food, to education, and of course, uh, special emphasis on uh, hastening the development in the regions, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, making the people feel uh, uh, science and technology benefiting them. So, uh, in that uh, sense, I guess uh, we really have to uh, take a look more closely at our delivery of services mm -hmm. in the regions. Mm -hmm. So it's a very big challenge for um, uh, academics and now politicians like you to make uh, the common people appreciate STEM or the science and technology engineering mathematics courses. How do you intend to do that during your term? Well, uh, actually, uh, uh, I guess uh, we just have to work in partnership with the different sectors. For example, uh, there are so many things that can be done to improve the services of uh, other departments you know, mm -hmm. in terms of decision making also policy making uh, there are many things that uh, can benefit the productive sectors whether mm -hmm. these are the big industries or the small industries the big industries mostly not so big but uh, those that are in the uh, medium uh, category for example can benefit much from the technological services that we are offering mm -hmm. uh, of course the small uh, industries uh, as we have been doing, uh, are benefiting through the uh, upgrading through technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the common people, there are uh, projects that uh, are technology-based that uh, can benefit the communities, whether it is uh, as simple as drinking water mm -hmm. or, uh, for example, uh, uh, addressing uh, nutritional problems mm -hmm. among, the, among the young and uh, of course the livelihood aspect. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of bright Filipinos who are inventors, but um, still there are problems when it comes to support from the government, when it comes to pushing their inventions to be mainstream. How will your term address this? Well, I must say that uh, even in the past, there are mm -hmm. programs which have been uh, uh, implemented. These are being implemented mm -hmm. to benefit this group. Okay? I guess the more important thing is to Number one, uh, well, we really have to uh, screen which has uh, pot market potential. Mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, there is also a need to, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, generate, well, uh, uh, have the younger uh, generation get uh, involved. Mm -hmm. okay, many of the inventors, for example, that we have been dealing with have been, have been there for the last so many decades, mm -hmm. okay? But uh, we think that probably there will be uh, more vibrancy for the younger ones who mm -hmm. come in. Now let's talk about disaster preparedness. Like you mentioned earlier, the DOSC is one of the front runners when it comes to disaster preparedness, about weather forecasting. Uh, we are looking forward to, uh, bad, to the bad effects of La Nina. How is the department of, uh, your department going to prepare for this? Well, uh, as you well know, there are two big agencies that are part of the DOSD family. We mm -hmm. have PAGASA and we have PBOLX, okay? Mm -hmm. So PBOLX has been there and uh, we have uh, been uh, fortunate that uh, uh, 
Uh, more recently, the Pag-asa Modernization Act has been uh, enacted. So, uh, first uh, thing to do is to get the implementing rules and regulations uh, approved also. Uh, it involves modernization, okay, and uh, there will be a uh, corresponding reorganization also. Uh, but I think uh, what is uh, important as well are the research and development that has been done, not only within Pag-asa, but also in the other institutions like the universities uh, in terms of uh, assessing hazards, in terms of uh, providing uh, geophysical data obtained from uh, remote sensing. And uh, these are uh, very useful not only for disaster preparedness, but also for productive activities like agriculture. Mm -hmm. So are there other sectors of the society, for example, the Philippine National Police, the head says that uh, they plan to increase the salaries of the policemen for them to be able to do their jobs properly. Do you think that the same move will be effective in a DOST, for example, for our weather forecasters so that we can stop them from moving to other countries? I'm still getting these statistics. If mm -hmm. really we have an exodus of uh, uh, weather post forecasters uh, <laughs> abroad, so before I can make any conclusions, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, I would like to see the real figures because uh, uh, we always hear that there are many yes. who have gone abroad, but uh, uh, I'm not sure whether the figures are uh, really big. Okay. Sir, what specific programs of the current administration do you intend to continue or improve on? Well, uh, there, there have been new programs that have been uh, instituted. For example, big programs in terms of this uh, uh, national uh, uh, assessment of mm -hmm. uh, hazards. Okay? Uh, we have the uh, uh, big programs that have been started in the area of genomics. And uh, of course, uh, there have been uh, programs in the health uh, area that should continue. For me, for example, the health research uh, uh, that had been started should be continued and expanded because mm -hmm. this has a big impact on uh, the population. Mm -hmm. So six years is not really a long time, but what is your vision by the end of six years for the DOST? Well, uh, first of all, we would like to maximize the contribution of DOST in terms of uh, getting science and technology utilized okay, by uh, different sectors, uh, including the government including the businesses and including the communities, uh, for example, even the local governments. You know? So, uh, but in terms of very concrete, uh, shall we say, accomplishments, uh, I would like to see, for example, that uh, the, the uh, shall we say, success in terms of uh, getting more uh, drugs discovered, mm -hmm. okay, or a success in terms of uh, uh, getting uh, more hybrids of uh, our major crops, which are uh, really uh, more high yielding and, uh, shall we say, uh, disease resistant. Uh, these areas are areas which are the concern, for example, of uh, uh, other government agencies, but uh, our role is really to support them to research and development. Mm -hmm. Sir, and finally, how can we encourage uh, more of the young ones and uh, those who are still, for example, those who are part of the K-12 program, mm -hmm. since one of the tracks that they can pursue is actually science and technology. How can we encourage these young ones to pursue that path? Well, actually, I think uh, uh, we, we have to really have some good communication. There's, there's already an ongoing program. Uh, that are designed to attract more uh, people. So, for example, uh, there are uh, competitions that really uh, raises up their interest. Let's say competition in, in robotics, or uh, uh, there are activities that are uh, in the form of immersion that mm -hmm. uh, can awaken the interest of uh, the young people in mm -hmm. science and uh, technology. But uh, I think communication is a very important role. I once uh, interviewed uh, young children in uh, a town in Bulacan, in Hagonoy, uh, where we installed a rain collection uh, system. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was asked to deliver a speech. But my audience were grade five and grade six. So it was very difficult for me to come up with a good speech. I just interviewed the young people in front of me uh, what they want to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did I discover? Out of 12 I interviewed, about uh, five of them wanted to be chefs and uh, uh, three wants to become baristas, uh -huh. and uh, uh, a few others want to become policemen. So there was only one who wanted to be a, uh, a teacher, mm -hmm. nobody mentioned being an engineer or a 
scientist and it's I think it's because of the what they see in media what they see uh, around them mm -hmm. so communication will play a very important role all right thank you very much sir that's incoming uh, incoming DOS secretary secretary Fortunato de la Peña thank you sir thank you Patrick. Thank you, sir.